war. War never changes. What's going on, Wastelanders? Draco Invictus here with a Fallout Day special. What follows is a timeline of events leading up to the Great War. Much of the following text comes from the timeline in the Fallout Bible, written by Chris Avalone, which in turn comes from the original Fallout timeline, created by Brian Fryermuth and Scott Campbell. Additionally, this timeline includes dates seen or mentioned in Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout Tactics, and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. In all Fallout official game guides, in the Fallout Bible, as well as the Van Buren design documents. Note that dates included from the Van Buren design documents are not confirmed as canon. Sometime between 1945 and 1960, the divergence occurred. There is no specific date for this, as it was several smaller events and milestones that pushed the Fallout universe into a different direction than that of our own historical timeline. By the year 1969, the United States is divided into 13 commonwealths each of which encompasses several states. The national flag is changed to reflect the division and depicts 14 stars, 13 in a circle to represent the commonwealths and one in the middle to represent the federal government and the nation as a whole. In 2002, the West Tech Research Facility is founded. Hubris Comics starts publishing comic books in 2021. One of their most popular is Grognak the Barbarian. In 2034, the Delta IX rocket is converted for U.S. military purposes. Crew and instrument sections are replaced with a nuclear warhead. In 2037, the Mr. Handy series of robots is first brought to market as a general construction and maintenance unit by General Atomics International. In 2040, the Tibbetts Prison is commandeered by the U.S. government in association with vault and Poseidon Oil to tie into their Project Safe House. In 2042, a major earthquake takes place in Mexico City. The Mr. Handy general construction robot becomes the leader in sales in Mexico. Wilson Atomatoys is established in Boston, Massachusetts, and the Giddy Up Buttercup, a product of Wilson Atomatoys, is copyrighted. On June 25th of that year, Robert House founds Robco Industries. In 2044, Nuka-Cola is invented by John Caleb Bradburton. Also in 2044, the Great Passion Fruit Famine hits America, people actually notice the taste difference in Nuka-Cola when the passion fruit flavor is removed. In the X-277 Viper magnetic rail cannon developed for the U.S. military by West Tech is deemed too costly to produce on a mass scale and abandoned. In 2049, Mass Fusion Company is founded by Carl Oslo. In April of 2050, the Nuka World Power Plant suffers from a meltdown just a few months before the park was scheduled to first open. The accident was then covered up by the Nuka-Cola Corporation and the whistleblower, C. Carlson, was fired. On May 1st of 2050, Nuka World opens its gates for the first time with two theme parks, Nuka Town USA and Kitty Kingdom. The small bottling factory near Nuka World is transformed into a big modern bottling plant with a guided tour attraction, World of Refreshment. In 2051, seeking to protect business interests and their oil supply, the United States begins to exert increasing pressure on Mexico, citing the political instability and pollution stemming from Mexico as a threat to the United States. Various economic sanctions serve to destabilize Mexico, and the United States military enters Mexico to keep the oil refineries running and making sure oil and fuel continue to make their way north across the border at Mexico's expense. March 5th of 2052, the socially transmitted new plague arises, killing tens of thousands. The United States closes its borders and the first ever national quarantine is declared. The source of the plague is unknown, but rumors persist that it's a genetically engineered weapon. In April of 2052, the resource wars begin. Many smaller nations go bankrupt, and the European Commonwealth, dependent on oil imports from the Middle East, responds to the Middle East rising oil prices with military action. The long-drawn-out war between the European Commonwealth and the Middle East begins. 
Starting in May of 2052, the United Nations already suffering begins to collapse. In a series of heated debates, many nations withdraw from the organization as the UN tries to keep peace. And on July 26th, the United Nations is officially disbanded. In 2053, Zax 1.0 goes online. Developed by vault initially a prototype of some of the systems designed to govern the vaults. It is given to the government to help the Department of Energy collect resource data. Within a year, it is taken by the military for plague and tactical research, and one version, Zax 1.2, would later be constructed for West Tech. The Red Menace holotape game is released to the public by Vault Tech Game Studios. In December of 2053, like an exclamation point at the end of a very bad year, a terrorist nuclear weapon destroys Tel Aviv. In January of 2054, limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East raises fears throughout the world. In light of the European Middle Eastern War and the Plague Scare, the United States officially sets Project Safe House in motion. The project, financed by junk bonds, is designed to create shelters called vaults for the populace in the event of a nuclear war or a deadly plague. Construction begins in late 2054 and proceeds rapidly due to advances in construction technology. Also in 2054, Repcon Aerospace is founded following the first launch of the Delta 9 rocket. In 2055, West Tech starts working on a new virus to kill the new plague. Zax 1.2 is brought in to regulate conditions in West Tech. It's not part of the vault Tech preservation software, so it does not have any orders to protect humanity after the bombs fall. In May of 2058, Nuka World opens a new park, Dry Rock Gulch, during Memorial Day weekend. And the Isla Negra Holdings begins to take control of Point Lookout, Maryland, as the new plague devastates the region. In 2059, the Anchorage front line is established as the United States increases its military presence in Alaska to protect its oil interests. The Anchorage front line causes tensions between the United States and Canada as the United States attempts to pressure Canada into allowing American military units to guard the Alaskan pipeline. The first artificial intelligence was also born in 2059. Limited by memory constraints, its expansion is rapidly halted. The discovery paves the way for future AI research in laboratories throughout the United States. In 2060, traffic on the streets of the world stops moving. Fuel becomes too precious to waste on automobiles, so alternatives are explored. Electric and fusion cars begin to be manufactured, but factories can only make limited amounts while conserving fuel. The U.S. economy teeters on bankruptcy. Pressure on fusion research increases. The European Middle Eastern War ends as the oil fields in the Middle East run dry. There's no longer a goal in the conflict, and both sides are reduced almost to ruin. The European Commonwealth dissolves into quarreling nation-states fighting over the remaining resources. In 2062, despite quarantine measures, the new plague continues to spread, fueling national paranoia. And a UFO, codenamed Palandine, crashes just north of Hagerstown, Maryland, but cannot be recovered. In May of that year, construction of Vault 92 begins. In August of 2063, the construction of most vaults are completed, except for Vault 13, whose construction finally gets off the ground, heralding a development cycle that seems plagued with problems. Drills begin in the other cities with completed vaults, but the increasing frequency of the drills has a cry-wolf effect, and the turnouts for drills trickle off as the years go on. In March of 2064, construction of Vault 106 begins. In 2065, Robert House concludes that atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years after every projection he ran deemed it a mathematical certainty. In February of 2065, construction of Vault 76 begins. April 14th, the Margo, or M-A-R-G-O-T, computer enters service. In June of 2065, due to enormous demands for electricity from 17 plus million population, a nuclear reactor in New York City goes super critical, almost causing a meltdown. The near meltdown brings into effect power rationing, and the term hot summer is used to refer to this incident. In August of 2065, increasing the need for mobility in the United States mechanized cavalry leads the military to focus the efforts on creating a man-based tank, essentially a two-legged walking armored unit, or power armor. Research grows until 2067, and several prototypes are developed, many of which prove to be unworkable in the field. 
These prototypes paved the way for future advances in military, construction, and fusion technology. In 2066, resource rationing in Denver causes riots. Midwest, USA, and Mexico start having food shortages and can't supply Denver with the food it needs. Food riots occur and the National Guard is called in. In May of 2066, construction of Vault 87 begins. In the spring of that year, as the oil resources dry up across the globe, China's fossil fuel dependency causes an energy crisis in the nation. China, bordering on collapse, becomes more aggressive in its trade talks with the United States. The United States' unwillingness to export oil to China leads to a breakdown in talks between the two countries. In the summer of that same year, adding further insult to the Sino-American relations, the first crude fusion cell is unveiled, one of the results of the Power Armor project. Devices designed for the fusion cell begin to be manufactured. Incorporating fusion power into the general U.S. infrastructure begins, but the process is too slow to supply power to the regions that need it. By the time of the Great War, few sections of the United States were supplied with fusion power. In the winter of 2066, China invades Alaska and the U.S. Congress declares war upon China. The Anchorage front line became a true battleground. As a sign of increasing tension between the two countries, Canada proves reluctant to allow American troops on Canadian soil or allow American planes to fly over Canadian airspace. American and Canadian tensions rise, but Canada eventually backs down and U.S. troops pass through Canada. This sets the stage for the eventual Canadian annexation. In September of 2067, Nuka World opens a new park, Safari Adventure. The first suit of T-45D power armor is deployed in Alaska. While lacking the full mobility of future versions, this power armor is incredibly effective against Chinese tanks and infantry. Its ability to carry heavy ordnance becomes key in various localized conflicts, and it has the power to destroy entire towns without endangering the wearer. China rushes to create its own versions, but they're many years behind the United States. In May of 2068, construction of Vault 92 ends, and in November of 2068, construction of Vault 112 begins. In 2069, Canada begins to feel the pressure from the United States military as the U.S. draws upon Canadian resources for the war effort. Vast stretches of timberland are destroyed, and other resources in Canada are stretched to the breaking point. Many Americans refer to Canada as Little America, and Canadian protests are unheard. February 11th of 2069, by order of the U.S. government, all Patriots cookbook magazines are banned and incinerated. However, many magazines still remain in circulation. In March, Vault 13 is finally completed. It's the last of the vaults on the West Coast, and drills begin. Due to its late completion, the cry-wolf effect that hurt the other vaults is not as pronounced. In October of 2069, construction of Vault 76 ends. In December, construction of Vault 106 and Vault 108 end. Vault 108 was in construction for eight years due to work stoppage. In 2070, the first of the Chrysler Motors fusion-driven cars are developed. Reassuringly big and American, the limited models carry a hefty price tag, but are sold out within days. In 2071, planned diversion programming copyrights the hollow game Atomic Command. In December of that same year, construction of Vault 87 ends. In 2072, Nuka World opens a new park, the Galactic Zone, becoming the most popular attraction there, and planned diversion programming copyrights the hollow game Automatron. June 3rd of 2072, Canada begins to be fully annexed by the USA. The United States' increasing demand for Canadian resources caused protests and riots in several Canadian cities. An attempted sabotage of the Alaskan pipeline is all the military needed as an excuse to finalize its annexation of Canada. September 15th, 2073, as China becomes increasingly aggressive with their use of biological weapons, the United States government feels that a countermeasure was needed. The Pan Immunity Byron Project is officially formed and plans are made to begin experiments at the West Tech Research Facility in Southern California. In June of 2074, construction of Vault 112 ends, and on June 24th, Negotiations between the U.S. and other world powers comes to a dramatic end, with the president walking out of the oil talks with the other world powers. After a much heated debate, the president storms out of the meeting and declares that the last known supply of petroleum will be used exclusively by the U.S., and the U.S. will not sell or trade any oil to outside parties. And contrary to their claims of seeking only to retake Alaska from the Reds, American power armor units, infantry, and mechanized divisions are deployed to China, but they become bogged down on the mainland, putting a further drain on American resources and supply lines. 2075, the Sierra Army Depot AI, Skynet, becomes self-aware. 
Robco Industries copyrights the Unified Operating System. The systems used for operating the Robco terminals. The copyright is renewed for each of the next two years. Robco brings up plans to purchase Repcon Aerospace, threatening a hostile takeover otherwise. And Vault Tech Game Studios copyrights the hollow game Red Menace. In March 21st, PVP experiments continue at West Tech with batch 10-011. In the wake of successful tests of the virus on single cell organisms, experiments on plant cells are postponed. The pan-immunity virin is renamed Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV. On May 9th, FEV experiments continue at West Tech with batch 10-011 in the wake of successful tests on flatworms. The flatworms exhibit increased size and heightened resistance to viral contagions. Experiments with insects have less success, and further experimentation on insects is postponed by Major Barnett. In June of 2075, General Brock becomes the commanding officer of Fort Strong. June 30th, FEV experiments continue at West Tech with batch 10-011 with white mice as subjects. Increased size, muscle density, and intelligence are noted. In August of that year, the United States Space Administration awards contracts to ArcJet Systems to develop the XMB booster engine and deep range transmitter for their Mars shot project, a manned mission to Mars. In November, unidentified submarine contacts rumored to be the stealth subs of the Chinese Ghost Fleet are spotted by U.S. monitoring stations A-31 and B-19, but no further sightings are reported. On November 9th, FEV experimentation batch 10-0 011 on rabbits is concluded. Increased size, intelligence, and aggression is noted. It's difficult to determine whether the flatworms in previous experiments were angrier or more violent than normal. On December 17th, a general of the U.S. military visits the switchboard facility and receives a report from Pam that Chinese stealth technology far outpaces that of the United States, and that the unidentified submarine spotted by U.S. monitoring stations a month prior may be from the Chinese Ghost Fleet, an elite naval unit rumored to possess stealth-capable submarines. The general dismisses the intelligence as unsubstantiated. In 2076, Repcon Aerospace is bought out by Robco Industries. Vault 76 is debuted by Vault Tech Corporation in honor of the United States' tricentennial. On January 3rd of 2076, a military team under the command of Colonel Spindle is sent to the West Tech Research Facility to monitor the experiments in the interest of national security due to fears of international espionage. Captain Roger Maxson is among the team personnel. June 12th of that year, splicing in several new gene sequences into their test virus, dogs are injected with batch 11-101A at West Tech. Although increased strength is noted, increased intelligence is not. Using batch 11-011, experiments are conducted on raccoons. The same results are noted, but the attempted escape of several infected raccoons causes Major Barnett to terminate the experiment and the test subjects. Two pairs of raccoons, however, are unaccounted for. Also in January, the United States annexation of Canada is complete. Canadian protesters and rioters are shot on sight, and the Alaskan pipeline swarms with American military units. Pictures of atrocities make their way to the United States, causing further unrest and protests. On April 15th, once all secondary tests and studies are done on the test subjects, all dogs from the batch 11-101A FEV tests at West Tech are terminated from a safe distance. In June, power armor prototype completed, resulting in the T-51B power armor. This is the pinnacle of power armor technology before the Great War. Many of these units are sent to China, and they begin to carve a swath through the Chinese forces. The Chinese resources are strained to the breaking point, and the supply lines from the nations China has annexed begin to break down. In August, Food and energy riots begin in major cities throughout the United States. Military units begin to be deployed in cities within the United States to contain rioters. Many temporary prisons are constructed. A state of emergency is declared and martial law soon follows. On October 4th, 2076, at West Tech, 15 chimpanzees are infected with batch 11-111. This is the most successful test to date. Growth and immunities in the chimpanzees surpass all other subjects. The military practically drools over the results. Plans are made in secret to begin testing in small quarantine towns in North America, and the Mariposa military base construction is sped up in anticipating of moving the West Tech project to a location under military supervision. On October 20th, Nuka-Cola Quantum 
is created. The year is now 2077. Nick Valentine, a police detective from Chicago, is brought to Boston to apprehend notorious criminal Eddie Winter during Operation Winter's End. It ends in failure, resulting in the death of Valentine's fiance Jennifer Lands by Winter, who escaped capture. Valentine seeks treatment for PTSD and has his brain scanned. Robert House puts himself in stasis. A Chinese sabotage attempt takes place at the Hoover Dam. The new plague hits Denver. Rioters burn down large parts of the city in their fear of containment contamination and anger at their treatment. Many panic and flee the city by car, clogging the freeways when they run out of gas and trapped everyone behind them. January 7th of 2077, Major Barnett orders transfer of all FEV research to the newly constructed Mariposa military base, despite objections by the research team. January 10th, Alaska is finally reclaimed and the Anchorage front line is again held by the Americans. January 22nd, the first domestic use of power armor within the United States for crowd and quarantine control begins. Units originally serving in China in the Anchorage front line find themselves fighting Americans at home. Food riots increase and many civilians are killed. In February, FEV research is leaked to the world through an unknown source. Protests arise in many major cities and governments around the world, as well as accusations that the United States is responsible for the new plague. FEV is seen as a threat and serves only to fuel tensions. The governments of the world fear what the U.S. is up to, speculating anything from trying to make a breed of super soldier to trying to make Hitler's master race. They begin to panic. In March, prepared for a nuclear or biological attack from China, the president and the enclave retreat to the Poseidon oil rig and make contingency plans for continuing the war. On April 2nd, John Caleb Bradburton puts himself in stasis using the Leap X program. Between July 10th and October 23rd, the Sierra Army Depot is evacuated. On October October 10th, the Army Detachment at Mariposa discovers that the scientists have been using military volunteers as test subjects in their experiments. Morale on the base breaks down, and in light of Colonel Robert Spindle's mental breakdown, the men turn to Captain Roger Maxon for leadership. October 13th, after an interrogation, Maxon executes Robert Anderson, the chief scientist at Mariposa. October 15th, Colonel Spindle commits suicide. All scientists are executed. October 20th, Captain Roger Maxon, now in control of Mariposa, declares himself to be in full desertion from the Army via radio, and receives no reply. October 21st, Maxon orders all families stationed outside the Mariposa facility moved inside. October 22nd, the platinum chip is processed. Mr. House expects the courier to arrive tomorrow afternoon. October 23rd, the morning of the Great War. It's early morning. The commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet and the U.S. Air Force report sightings of possible Chinese submarines at 12.01 a.m. and aircraft approaching U.S. territory at 3.37 a.m. 82 students from the early dawn elementary school go on a field trip to Lamplight Caverns with a couple of teachers and a few parent chaperones. At 9.13 a.m., the Integrated Operational Nuclear Detection System, IONS, reports four probable launches of ballistic missiles. The U.S. Armed Forces go to DEFCON 2. At 9.17 a.m., NORAD confirms the IONS report. The U.S. Armed Forces go to DEFCON 1. Bombers are scrambled for immediate takeoff. 9.26 a.m., follow-up 4 prologue begins. Response scenario MX-CN91 is ordered by the POTUS. Full nuclear retaliation is authorized. 9.42 a.m. Nuclear strikes on New York City and Pennsylvania are confirmed. The sole survivor and their family evacuate from their home to Vault 111. 9.47 a.m. Washington, D.C. and Boston are struck with nuclear weapons. The bombs and missiles fly. Who struck first is unknown. Other countries, seeing the missiles on their way, launch their planes and fire their warheads as well. Air raid sirens sound, but very few people heed the warning, thinking it's a false alarm. The vaults are sealed. Two hours of nuclear bombardment ensues upon the Earth's surface. The effects are far worse than most imagined. The Earth's faults shift violently, thrusting mountain ranges through the soil. Whole lands are submerged under floods of water. The Great Blackout, EMP produced by the bombing, kills unshielded electronic devices such as vehicles and other machinery. It lasts for an unknown period of time. The Lucky 38 systems crash under the weight of the nuclear attack, knocking Robert House unconscious. The platinum chip, still at Sunnyvale, becomes buried under the rubble from the aftermath of the Great War, where it would stay buried for over 200 years. Vault 12 fails to close properly. Once it becomes known that the other vaults are sealed, people within Bakersfield attempt to force their way into Vault 12 to protect themselves and their families. The West Tech Research 
research facility takes a direct hit, breaking open the FEV tanks on levels 4 and 5 and releasing it into the atmosphere. Mutated by radiation, it loses its mutagenic abilities. The Mariposa military base survives. The soldiers within are protected from their radiation and FEV flooding the wasteland. Well, there you go, wastelanders. There is a much, trust me, abbreviated timeline of the Fallout series. If you have any questions, comments, kicks, or complaints, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And until next time, Wastelanders, you take care of yourselves out there. This is Draco Invictus saying that this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya.